Hello and welcome to the Board Game Nights of the Round Table. Uh, first for us, this is going to be a top 10. Uh, so I thought that it, I, I love the idea of the top 10 desert island games or board games. So the premise is, if you were going to be exiled to a desert island. What game would you choose? Yeah. And the idea is like on Friday nights, you would have some friends row their way across the ocean to your island <laughs> to play with. And also humidity and um, like humidity and salt water and stuff wouldn't tear your games apart. And all your food would be provided for Yeah, it. you're literally just supposed to go to an island and live because you're that dangerous to society, I guess. I don't know. Because <laughs> you love board games. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have come up with our own list, uh, our own unique list, because we're, it's like we're two different people or something. Yeah. <laughs> Even Who though we knew? married, we have our own ideas, you Who know. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, do you want to go with number 10 or do you want me to go with number 10? Oh, you it's can a go with number 10. Okay. Uh, so... I, I decided to put a couple of um, widely played games um, in this list because uh, uh, so for me one of the games that I like playing and just talking so I, I don't gamble but it's poker um, so it's fun to play poker and just talk and I guess we could like I didn't even think about poker why didn't I think of that because yeah, I cause, love that game yeah poker has a ton of different just game play, modes and yeah you can sit around and socialize and I guess we could play for fruit or something and, you know like Star Trek I love Star Trek why didn't yeah, I think poker of scene. poker scene like oh so, well poker and that's the kind of game that i feel like the more i play it the better i would get at it so, yeah uh, that's um and you i would uh, you could i could spend time not playing reading odds reading up on statistics to get better yeah. at the game and mathematically maximize so would you well. actually have access to a phone or, or internet yeah something like that or i could order books to have uh you know then you have to play video games we'll have to have <laughs> the top 10 video games and computer games for one of these so poker would be my number 10 just because of the social element where I could sit and talk and plus it's something I could spend a lot of time getting better at. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, my number 10 was Unmatched. Unmatched. I like the dynamics of the game. Um, there's a lot of uh, versatility with it. Mm -hmm. You have um, a bunch of different ones. As long as I was, I was allowed to take all the different ones, yep. you would have tons of them to play with. And each one of them has a different aspect or a different way you can play them. So it would be hard to get bored playing those games, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the, I think the idea with this too is you have access to all the expansions of whatever game. And Unmatch has a lot of expansion, yeah. a lot of content. Um, it's not on my list because I have another game that kind of scratches that itch, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Number nine. Okay, my number nine is Hanafuda. I know a lot of people would think that is absolutely crazy. Like it's only a standalone game. There's not much to it, but I absolutely love it. I could just sit and play for hours. I know, I think Chris gets a little bored playing with me, but I absolutely love the game. Um, it's just, I don't know how to explain it, but just like the different parts of it and the art and then just like figuring out which goes with what what card goes with what and then just being able to relax with a person talk and mindlessly play a game i just like that aspect of it so well and that kind of scratches the same as poker in my opinion so yeah i guess yeah. it's so more I, of a I japanese think, poker so yeah yep, yep. Yeah. so I, I i totally understand why hanafuda would be a good list a good game for this list so yeah. Uh, my number nine is actually, a, this is the last kind of really common game um, out there, but it's chess. Uh, same reasons as poker. I could spend a lifetime getting better. I'm mediocre at chess, so I would like to spend That's time. hilarious because it almost made my list. It almost. I almost yeah. put that for number 10. And, and there's, um, I guess right now with certain board game personalities out there, the idea is chess is not fun. And I'm like, I think chess is a great game. Yeah. It's survived hundreds of years for a reason. There's a lot of other games out there that have died in the past hundred, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah, and um, that's not one of them. And I feel yeah. like it's very strategic, and you could spend hours and just be thinking about what your next step would mm -hmm. be. Not to mention, like, if I could have outside contact, I could play a chess game throughout the week. Yeah. Um. So that's that's why chess yeah. would be on my list. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to number eight. Um. I'm kind of cheating here. <laughs> I put two games down here just because I could take one or the other. Uh, 
Cheater, I, cheater, pumpkin eater. Yeah, these are trading card games. Um, I feel like the, the allure of the trading card game in the Desert Island setting would be because like there's so vast amount of cards out there that you could spend hours just building decks. Yeah. So uh, the two trading card games that I currently really enjoy would be the Digimon trading card game oh, or that's a good Imagination. One. Um, yes. And both of those I've seen. Um, well, and, I think and this is number eight? You this have, is number eight. Yep. That's hilarious because number eight is imagination for me. Oh, okay. Wow. So. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> I didn't need to see it. I could have put Digimon. You could have imagination. But this, the idea is that you will spend so much time finding synergies in your deck and building the perfect decks, and then you could mm -hmm. battle them, find out what doesn't work. And, yeah. And also, like, you could try one color, um, or like one area and then you could try to build a perfect deck and then you could go to the next area. I could see myself spending a lot of time working on something like that. Well, I feel like um, you could do the different colors. Be like, I think that's what you meant, mm -hmm. but um, I could build the different decks for each color and not have to be playing a game with somebody. Mm -hmm. So it would give me time to focus on that. But anyways. Mm -hmm. So our number eight would be Imagination and Digimon. Um, cool. Yeah. That's fine. So we'll be at number seven. Um, number seven for me is Fortune and Glory. Ooh. It is one of my favorite games from Flying Frogs. We love us Flying Frogs um, over here. <laughs> yeah, we do like that um, company. Anyways, I feel like it's dynamic enough and it has a good variety to it. You have lots of relics. You have lots of places that you can match them up with and it kind of gives that indiana jones vibe and um, i think there's plenty to do with it plus you have a variety of enemies to go up against mm -hmm. and um it just carries a lot in the game and the art is good as well so i think it would just be a good game to be able to play on a desert island so mm -hmm. i can see that um i think the Fortune and Glory, the, the itch that I would have that would scratch that would be um, the last or the Touch of Evil. Um, it, they play very yeah. similarly, but like yeah. they're both cooperative. Um, but yeah, I can see why that there there is a flying frog game on my list, but that's further down. Um, but that's a good choice. Further Fortune down Lord. or further up? Well, it's it's higher on the list, but uh, so it's further up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number six is a game that I've played a handful of times. Wait. Seven, isn't it? No. Seven. Oh, seven. Yeah, seven. seven. Yeah. It's a game I've He's played a couple skipping. times. Yeah, I am skipping. Nice. My number seven is a game that I've played a handful of times. I still don't quite fully understand it. It's also a card game, but it's not like a trading card game. It's a, um, it's called a living card game. It's Netrunner, the Android Netrunner. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I played that a few times and I felt like I was just beginning to understand how it played. It's, uh, it plays asymmetrically, which means that the, um, the hackers and the corporations play completely different from each oh, other. Okay. Um, the, the corporations are trying to achieve an agenda, whereas the hackers are trying to stop that agenda, essentially. Oh, interesting. Um, I've, I've never played, so yeah, I, really I don't the, know. So that's, that's one aspect. With it being asymmetry, you could spend a long time playing, getting good as a hacker, and then switch over to a corporation, and now you're playing a new game. Interesting. And same thing, you're building decks. Um, so uh, there's a ton of... There's a ton of stuff out there. I wish they would bring it back, at least like do another print run to get all the cards back in the market because they are getting more and more expensive. Uh, but Android Netrunner is insanely fun, but I would love to play it more so I could feel like I could actually understand <laughs> what I'm doing. Uh, so yes, Android Netrunner would be my number seven. Nice. Number six, which is what I was going to talk about before I <laughs> before Olivia put me back on track. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's another game I've played a couple of times. I feel like I understand it more than Netrunner, but it's one of those games like chess to where I could spend a lot of time playing it to get better at it because I feel like I feel like I was just scratching the surface when we played it, and that's Agricola. Oh, I put that as an honorable mention, or I was thinking about having yeah. it as an honorable um, mention. So yeah. It is a good game. I do enjoy that game. Yeah, it's one of those games where like it's really, really easy to fall apart. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> it's really, really easy not to get your family fed. Uh, Agricola is a farming game. 
I think it's in the 1400s. And I think the tagline line is, it's not easy being a farmer in the 1400s. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So and true. So yeah, you're, you uh, essentially, it's a worker placement game where you're sending your workers out to uh, get you resources that you can build bigger farms and get more workers and then try to feed those workers and you have animals. It's a really cool game, but again, you have to be good at managing everything. And then as the game progresses, you unlock more stuff, which I also like too. Yeah, um, but you still have to feed your family. Yeah. So it yeah. still has to come back. Yeah, so to you're that. always watching that. And there's, a, it's a move where literally taking the first place token is a very viable strategy. Even though that feels like a waste sometimes. I'm sitting out my worker literally just to get that token, but I need that token. Yeah. Yeah, you so, do. So yeah, Agricola, because yeah. I could spend. I could spend years trying to get better at that game. Me too. We're going to do a play for through at some point, uh, probably in the next year. So, uh, my number six, correct? Because mm -hmm. he's kind of throwing me off. Number six. Yep. Um, I would say is Everdell. Mm, good choice. Uh, hey, two worker placement games. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Like right on yeah. the number six spot. So um, our number uh, eight were trading card games. Yeah. And our number uh, number uh, six is where yeah worker yeah. placement. Um, uh, Chris bought me the full expansion, big box yeah. of Everdale. Um, yeah, I have only played <laughs> like two expansions, I think, plus the junior version with my son. Um, good game, by the way. For kids, yeah. Yeah, good game for the for kids and good game just in general for the Everdale. But I think there's enough variety in that. Plus the art is amazing. And I love the little miniatures of the um, mice and the foxes. And the meeples. And are, the yeah. meeples. Oh, yeah. like, uh, they're just so cool. And then you got the blue butterflies and they just really pop. And um, you get to build your own town. The art is amazing. So it's a lot of color mm -hmm. gradient. gradient. I guess you would say. I don't know. It's, 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 it's visually aesthetic. Visually it's visually appealing, yeah. appealing I yeah. guess. <laughs> I, there's another word I wanted, but I can't think of what the word is. But um. Well, and the thing I like about Everdale is you can't have, you really can't have a strategy going into the game. You have to see what cards come out and then play according to the cards that come out because sometimes you'll go, go, several games without seeing certain cards that's true so it's always and different. then every expansion adds more cards to that so yeah, yeah everdale I, I thought about everdale i considered it but i think agricola is to me just a more mechanically interesting yeah but i think everdale is a valid choice yeah. um so yeah that's a good choice um number five we're rounding the halfway point here so five for me um is a very relaxing game. It is a game that I like to just sit down with Chris and just play styles. Absolutely just play styles. Can you guess what it is? Carcassonne? Yes, Carcassonne. There is enough expansions there. I feel like I would not get bored. Plus it's a very relaxing game. We play very chill. Like we don't play <laughs> yeah, super competitively. We don't play competitively. Now, if I was on Desert Island, that might change. Yeah. But, yeah. um. The way we play, I think it's more of a relaxation game for me. Gives us something to do. We sit around yeah. the table, we play styles, and we talk, and we yeah. try to see if we can score big. And, yeah, yeah, and we like to make it different puzzles and get yeah. our roads really big and stuff like that. So, Yep, uh, Carcassonne's a great game. It is a great game. Carcassonne is one of the original tile laying games. Essentially, you have a bag that's full of random tiles. You draw it, and you have to try to place it where it legally fits on the map. And then you uh, can put a worker there, so it's kind of another worker placement game. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can complete the feature that your worker is on, you score points. And so it's fun because sometimes you'll start a city over here, and then you'll get yourself in a predicament where you need a specific piece to get to complete the city. So then you start, you have to go over there, and you always have to be paying attention for that piece to come up that you can yes. place. My number five is kind of a bit of a cheat. <laughs> uh, hint. Um, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, you like a lot of yeah, games. It's cooperative. Um, it's cooperative pandemic? No. Um, I was like going to say, I didn't think that was like your favorite game of all time. There's a lot of expansions. A lot of expansions. Touch of Evil. No, there's like three expansions to Touch of Evil. Oh. It's based I'm off horrible of. horrible at this. It's based off of uh, existing franchises, pre existing franchises. 
Hero Escape? No, Hero Escape is its own thing. Why can't I okay. think of this? Oh, the G.I. Joe or the Power uh, Rangers? Power, Rangers. Or Power like, Rangers is actually his all-time favorite. No, it's, it's not. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my favorite, favorite games. Of that genre. Well, so the Guardian system in general. Yes. The Power Rangers or G.I. Joes and both just because of the vast amount of expansions. You can play the game several, several times and fight different guys. You can challenge yourself. You can... Um, there's different heroes to play as, and they do a good job at making the heroes feel different. So, um, they then, do. then you can combine I, them. I enjoyed the GI Joe, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, not so as I'm saying, the Guardian a system. Power Ranger fan, but it was still fun. So. Yeah, so I would go with the Guardian system. I think um, I would have that would keep me entertained for several like hours and hours and hours. And I obviously, there's more that. coming out. <laughs> uh, number four. I will let you. Okay. We've actually mentioned this game several times by now. Uh, it's the kind of game that every time you play, it's going to be different. It's customizable. You're going to spend more time building the maps than you do playing the game, which is fun because the map building is fun. And that is, of course, HeroScape. That was number four for you. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be higher on the list, honestly. It's in the top half. <laughs> so. So here at Skate, uh, you uh, have hexagon plastic pieces for a map. You have like grass, water, stone, sand, and you build up terrain. And then you draft armies that are meant to be come from different times and dimensions. Um, so you could have medieval knights fighting World War II soldiers fighting future agents and gorillas with machine guns. <laughs> or... Um... Or Iron Man, yeah, or yeah, like a, Captain America. There's a Marvel expansion. Um, yes, uh, that predates the MCU, by the way. So that's that's <laughs> fun. But anyway, so um, yeah, so Hero Escape would be the kind of game that there's just so much out there that again, I would spend probably the whole week before building the map. We used to, uh, Stephen and I used to spend hours building the maps. So that's one of those games where it can be just as fun outside of the game itself. So the idea would be spending time. Making maps. Yep. Um, me, number four, was Horrified. Okay. I really enjoy that game, especially the universal uh, version of it. We just played the what American, was it? Monster. The American Monster one just recently, which you, you will be see, seeing, or it's, you should have seen. Yeah, it's up already. Okay, it's up already. Sorry. But... Um, my heart is in the universal one, and I just really enjoy the game. Trying to get those monsters, trying to save the people. It's just a lot of fun to me, and I think it would be good. Yeah, and again, I think with the rules, like if you could play any horrified, you could play universal, and then you could play American mm, Monster, you could play Great Monsters, and then the World yeah. Monsters, which just came out. Yeah, um, yeah the, the horrified is a fun cooperative yeah. game. It's, it's, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy the, um, the puzzles, you have to think about, okay, what's the best way to tackle this? Um, yeah. The mini games are fun. So, yeah, very good choice. I mean, I enjoy working together, yeah. too, so. Ready for number three. Number three. I think you get to go first on this one. Okay. Hero Escape. Oh. Was number so, three for me. If you would have told me that was deeper on your list, I would have waited till now to talk about it. But go ahead and give us, give us your thoughts. That's Hero fine. Escape. I think for a desert island, if I had a table or two just for those games that I can make these amazing maps. And then I'd be ready for my friends to come over as they row over in their boat and have my snacks all set up and we could just play once they got there. But they could have dedication or we could like spend hours just making the map and then we wouldn't have to mess with it and tear it all down. Mm -hmm. It would just be on those tables and we could do whatever. One guy, I, um, I saw these pictures like this would have been year, decades ago um, on the Hero Escapers forums, but somebody built a battleship. Oh, that would a, be cool. It was cool. And I think he took it to Gen Con one year. It was crazy. He, was, he wasn't even like, really neat. he wasn't with the company at all. He was just a fan. I think his yeah. name was Dr. Weird Scaper. <laughs> Great name, by the way. But um, yeah, that just brought that memory back. I, that was they, He built it all out of castle pieces. So he, he would have spent really tens neat. of thousands of dollars on did that. Did he use the water pieces to go around I it? can't remember. I don't think he did at that time because it was just so massive. Yeah. And it was harder to get water pieces back then. Uh, I could see that. Yep. I mean, if you guys have some interesting maps, love to see them. Comment them down in the subscription below mm -hmm. and we'd love to see them. Yeah. 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 I want to, now that there's a lava set coming out, 
I'm Ooh. going to build a giant volcano. volcano. I've always wanted to that build a giant so volcano sweet. and make it like an actual lava. Yeah. Map. You have to navigate through the lava fields to yeah, attack each other. Yeah, I would love help. I'd love to help you make one. Yeah, if we're I can going talk. to be making some HeroScape content <laughs> coming up. But my number three is the Flying Frog games that I hinted at before. But this is just, again, based on sheer amount of content that they Touch have. Of evil? No, sheer amount of content. Oh, just the like, Flying Frogs. Yeah, Flying Frogs, just how much content That's they have cheating. out. No, 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 no. The Flying Frog game I mentioned. This is one game uh, that has a ton okay, of content. Never mind. Has a ton of content that I could spend hours and hours playing. You could. Go through a campaign and then plays a different character the next campaign. Oh, I know what it is. The Shadows of Brimstone. Yep. I've played that before. It's a great dungeon growing game. Yep. So the uh, Shadows of Brimstone has cowboys, samurais, conquistadors, um, Vikings. Okay. Um, and they're releasing like an Egyptian adventure set, which has a character from Fortune and Glory in it, by the way. Mm -hmm. the, the guy with the eye patch, Jacques, uh, what's his name? Oh. And you're going to explore, uh, there's going to be like a train, which I love is for the Western stuff. I think stuff, you but... played Jacques last time. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Play. Did we play for this for yeah. our channel? Yeah, we we got we okay, got our we remember. got our tails handed to us. We had such bad luck at the beginning and couldn't recover. Well, um, we play games without filming them, and then we play games when we film them. So I can't remember. Yeah, but so Fortune and Glory, there's just so much like there's worlds to explore, and if you just play random, you don't know what world you're going to yeah. go to. Um, it's really fun jumping oh, through. The, not to mention. What are they the called? Portals. The portals, yes, yeah. to the different worlds, because you never know where you're going to land. The other great thing about... Except for the Game Master. Well, Sorry, go ahead. No, you don't know where you're going to... Like, there's no Game Master in that game. Oh, there isn't? I no. thought there was. No. The okay. thing, too, is some scenarios will tell you where to land. Oh. But... Okay. Um, I think we played where we... we just... Yeah, we were doing random, but... Um, the other thing about Shadows of Brimstone that I absolutely love that would keep me occupied on a desert island is painting the miniatures. Yeah. Yeah, so I can see that I for would, you. I would spend a lot of time yeah. getting those miniatures, and I would take I would my just, time. I would just learn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, so yeah, that that's the kind of game that you're going to spend hours and hours and hours again outside of game, doing stuff. So, yeah. Shadows of Brimstone, my number three. Yeah. Number two. I think uh, number two for me is a miniatures game um, that spends uh, you could spend a lot of time playing and building. Is that uh, battle deck. Battletech. Battletech, yep. <laughs> yep. And free printing in my case. Um, I would spend, at, you know, again, you spend time outside painting your models. You spend time building your armies, trying to figure out the right points. There's like a mech building system. And all the roles that you can go through, the games can take hours and hours if you want to. Again, you can choose. You can play the quicker mode. I like the longer kind of methodical gameplay with so uh, Battletech would be a game. You could do campaigns. You could do certain auras. There's just so much stuff there. And again, you're looking at, if I go back and buy the original Battle Droid set, I could still play with today's sets. Like it's pretty much like a 10% rules creep. It's not that much different. So I That's do think good. that Battletech needs to step back and they need to streamline stuff, some stuff. Um, because right now they're just kind of, everything's not really organized. It's kind of clunky. So they, they needed to take a little bit of time to make it a little bit better. But, I mean, again, I could spend a long time just playing Battletech and be happy. Well, if you were on a desert island, you could work out those gangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have fan-made spreadsheets and all that stuff. You'd be, like, typing on your computer and yeah. everything. They'd have to yeah. hire you. <laughs> they probably wouldn't. Probably not. <laughs> What's your number two? What do you think my number two is? Would give me a hint. It involves trading. Trading. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Catan. Catan! I love that game. Um, I love playing the big, I would guess you call it the big boards, where you can flip over having cities and knights and things. That's my favorite um, version to play. Um, I like the hexagons and you can put them in different orders. You can make your own maps again. Um, just the variety of things you can do with that game, I just think would be lots of fun. Um, I enjoy that game. I think Catan's one of those games that has surpassed the hobby like chess and poker have yeah. uh, to where it's you're getting people who they will only play Catan and they will play that game, and they will have tens of thousands of plays of Catan. Uh, the base game is, like, strategically, it's a masterpiece. Like, you you can um, 
Yeah, you that that base game is very entertaining. You could spend a long time getting good yeah. at it, but then all the expansions just add some good variety to the game. I would, yeah, I would love to play just the original. Like I'm planning on teaching my son mm -hmm. how to play that game and having fun with him with it. Um, I haven't bought the Junior Catan yet. It looks a little bit different to me, so I'm a little nervous about getting it. I would prefer just to teach him the original, so I'm looking forward to that. But um, just the amount of fun and hours that you can play I mm -hmm. and not get bored, I just think Ka it would yeah. be... Catan's one of those games, again, where people like... like there's, there's personalities out there who like to act like it's not that great, um, which I disagree with that. I think Catan's yeah. a great game. But, yeah. like... Um, I think that the problem is because it is so commonplace, like we tend to put normie games like in the categories of like Monopoly and yeah. Shoots and Ladders. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 Catan's a great game that normies happen to like. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it, there's just because more people like it doesn't mean like, you know, that's that's a that's a silly mindset to act like it's somehow less than. And again, Catan has su survived since what the nineties? Yeah, it's, the it's 80s, a 90s. brilliant game. It's been around a lot longer than a lot of modern games that people praise are going to be around. Okay, like yeah. people will still be playing Catan when some modern games <laughs> die. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, I, I sorry. That, that's it's just one of those things that that bothers me where people act like uh, again these these games that have been around for a while are like horrible, badly. Like Monopoly is a badly designed game. It is. Because you have to roll dice, and that's all you get to do. There's it no is. choice. Catan, there's choice. Now, I think for new people, it's a little hard because the most important decisions you make are right at the beginning of the game. For Catan, yeah, they are. But that doesn't mean it's a bad yeah. game. It just means it has a steep learning curve. Yeah. Like, I'm not good I at mean, Catan, by the way. Like, I am not good at Catan, but I love the game. <laughs> I'm looking forward to when Chase can play it because then we can actually play it some yeah. more in this house because it's three or more players so yeah. i think it plays so. best at four but the five and six are fun There's, that's well, just variety. Marshall get there eventually. again i can see myself like chess and poker spending hours getting better at katan and i'd like mm -hmm. that i'd have fun with that yeah okay so i think our number ones are both identical i think they are um so if i were stuck on a desert island and i could only bring like 10 desert I like you know board games with me mm -hmm. um this is a board game or a tabletop game that I would love, that I, I think you'd get the most enjoyment out of. I would spend a lot of time outside of the game playing, mm -hmm. like preparing for it. Um, it has infinite replayability. Mm -hmm. It does. Role-playing games. It uses wild imaginations, yep. too. I think, like, I would definitely try to be a game master if this was when, if I was on Desert Island, because then mm -hmm. I would have the time to make a whole story and... Be able to figure things out but i really enjoy this game um the character and stuff the characters that you can make mm -hmm. um i think i've only made like two two characters well i am just say role-playing games in general i'm i know but i'm saying yeah. like for the um well you had that one character oh yeah that i have made more uh, role-playing yeah i've like had almost several. a decade yeah yes i've had one character that i've played for and most people have those characters that if they're just playing a generic game, they might throw that character yeah. in so they don't have to think too much about it. But um, I think if I had to suggest one, I would probably go with Cyberpunk 2020 if I had would to you? stick with one. Yeah, just because just I love one. the combat system in Cyberpunk. I do really enjoy it. The deadly gunplay, yes. uh, the, the versatility of the game too. Like yes. You can build just about I anything. I really enjoy it. The um, amount of content that's out there for it. Mm -hmm. um, I also like Pathfinder, the first edition. That's what I was going to say. Pathfinder was the one I wrote, yeah, that's wrote really down. Good. But there's, so. there's a lot. There's um, I enjoy the Ninja Turtles and other strangeness. Um, I only like played that. that. I've only played that like one. I'm looking forward time. to the new rule books. Was uh, it one time that we played? Well, we, we almost played, played it. it. Oh, we almost played it. Yeah. yeah. We almost. We got to the table. <laughs> we were ready to go. And so stopped. technically, we haven't yeah. played it. Relatives house burned down. That's so. <laughs> so we had to go because it was a close birthday by. party for him yep. too. So happy thirtieth. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends tease that it's cursed because every time we try to bring it to the table, something happens. Yeah. So. I think COVID happened too at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of scared to play it. <laughs> well, it's the new version, so, you know, that's uh, it, it, this one won't be cursed, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, if we were stuck on a desert island 
I would prefer role playing games, and I would probably pick more role playing games and board games just because of the replayability. Yeah, I would agree with that. The only thing is, you would have to have a group of friends. Well, that's to play why that the, the, they they have to canoe out to us, you know, rowboat. You know, <laughs> they're, they're like that uh, on the way. Like Captain, remember the pirates from Captain Hook, and the, so they're like bouncing along on the way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so that's that's uh that's our that's a group coming to us uh, every Friday. <laughs> it's an absurd list, but it's something fun to think about, you know. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you for watching. Um, let us know what your top ten desert island board games would be. I'm actually genuinely interested in this. I, I would like to hear. Um, what what you think would be uh, uh fun and the longevity and replayability yeah um i mean like i'm down for a good bar board game yeah. i'd try that <laughs> <laughs> Shh, not yet <laughs> <laughs> if there's a board game you want us to play um that you enjoy put it down in the comments and we'll see about getting it and playing it and putting our review on it so well, we don't really do reviews. We kind of do impressions. Okay, impressions. <laughs> Sorry. You got to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take the initiative and, and roll, roll out. out.